What I would have done, if I jump into my boost tuning template we've created, we can see that my boost by gear here is fairly low. It's at 18% duty cycle, and that's that's going to be uh, not a lot of boost, especially in first gear. And if we kind of poke in here, we can see that the map pressure only went to about 13, 12 to 13 psi. So it wasn't running a ton of boost or ton of power in first gear, but we still got the wheel spin. Now we could do some things to help us gain traction, such as putting weight on the front end of the car. This did not have weight hung over the front end. Um, you know, we could have possibly went to a larger uh, slick size. This was using uh, the Mickey Thompson 24 and a half by nines. We might have tried the M&H uh, 25 or the M&H 24 and a half by nine and a half. So we could have possibly change a different tire or maybe we would have tried a little bit different burnout to get the tire higher, to, to bite a little bit harder. But looking at what we're dealing with now, let's just assume that we had everything on our end of things the best we could get and we're dealing with a track that just has poor conditions that we're just not going to be able to stick. So what, do you, what I would do in this case, because my boost is fairly low, I would jump into my parameters here and I would actually go into my boost by gear table and I would jump down here into my first gear and I might even want to go and reduce the boost here. Now, if we reduce the boost, if we bump it down, let's just say, we maybe bump it down to 2 or 3% duty cycle, um, it's going to ultimately maybe build a little less boost. But the problem is going to be when we have less boost here in first at the top of first gear, when we shift and come into second, we can see that we have the boost is at 11, 12 PSI, and then it takes all of this time to effectively build the boost that we want to get here at 21, 22 pounds. Now, second gear here, looking at it, has a fairly linear uh, slope here, and it was putting power down fairly decent. Now, this gear could have potentially handled more power, and we could have accomplished that by getting into boost a little bit sooner here. So instead of having this ramping effect, maybe we would have just shifted and had 20 pounds. We wouldn't have had to wait for it. And getting more power down here in second gear is going to be the key to dropping our 330, and that's going to really improve our quarter mile time. Most of the uh, drop in your ET is going to come from improving your 330. Now, your 60 foot matters, but you can only get that so quick. Uh, so, you know, you might have a 148, 150, 60 foot, and that's going to be very good. But we need to get the 330 down, and that's going to all pertain to the second gear here. So, if we drop our boost here at the top of first, it's going to ultimately carry less boost into second. And it takes time for boost to build, and that's going to be one thing that you always have to keep in mind. We want to keep the turbo on boil. We want to keep the turbo spinning to have that boost pressure there. So what can we do in this case to potentially even have a little bit more boost at the top of first and then have it there in second when we need it? Now, we can